Peter Chang here and right now we're going to start building out our transmission and I just want to point out to you that X-Factory also makes a uh, shaft gear as well and what's kind of cool about the X-Factory version is that the uh, spacer is actually built right on there uh, it's actually manufactured by MIP for X-Factory and it, uh, it wears better than the team associated version so the X-Factory version actually lasts much longer than the uh, Team Associated version with that spacer in place. So if you get the opportunity to do I highly recommend the X-Factory version for that. Another little slight difference is that the there's a, both the 3 16th by 1 8 uh, ball bearing and I like to use the X-Factory 6200 versions to hold the top shaft in place. Uh, I just find that it, it seems a bit longer wearing and it works much better. So just so you know, the kit of the SCX60CF comes with a uh, bearing for that for the outdrive so you don't have to worry about that at all. Uh, once again the, the difference with the mid molder conversion is that we have two idler gears and uh, we, could, we could use the the uh, SCX60 ball bearing and you could also use an X-Factory ball bearing as well too and my kit actually came with a uh, ball bearing uh, for that and I'm going to just show you that the 6202 is the uh, ball bearing that came in my kit so just so you know that that you could actually use that one as well um, idler gear you should have the uh, it's just the stock 9361 Team Associated Idlery Gear and I actually found that the uh, X-Factory version actually worked out pretty good uh, for this area you could also use the uh, 6200 uh, ball bearing for the uh, idler gear and of course the, uh, the ball differential from our last step also goes in there and also the uh, black grease and the uh, stealth differential lube as well too uh, just once again you could use either one for the build and I actually prefer the uh, stealth differential loop for for lubricating parts of the transmission the instruction manual suggests using a a uh, socket wrench uh, to push in to help push in the the uh, ball bearings and this works great if you have a uh, uh, more of a decent socket wrench set uh, here I actually have a, just a slightly uh, cheaper set, but but just so you know, it's uh, the principle would be you could use your uh, socket wrench to and to push in the uh, the ball bearings so that you don't crush them. Uh, like if you're using like a screwdriver or your thumb, you have a tendency to compress on one angle and then and then crush the uh, the bearings. And I find myself guilty of constantly just prodding and poking right at the bar, bar or at the ball bearings. So, just so you're aware that um, <laughs> you're supposed to be using the, uh, the the socket wrench set to apply equal force as you as you push down on it. So, here we have the uh, out drives in there, and those are going in pretty good. Next step is I'm going to go ahead and put in the uh, the shaft bearing and it's interesting that the uh, X-Factory guys have actually made their own uh, shaft bearing but it looks like the same size as the uh, team associated uh, ball bearing and I'm pretty sure that either one would work I'm just gonna be a stickler and just use the uh, X-Factory part uh, once again uh, in that top shaft you could use the X-Factory part nothing really wrong with that it just doesn't wear as long so here I am, I'm just going to go ahead and use the X-Factory part for that. Let's open up that bag. And once we've, we've got this, we're, we're pretty much set with the transmission build. Uh, so with that ball bearing in place, that, that, uh, that uh, shaft gear would actually fit in pretty good. And it, and it looks, looks like a very good fit, actually. So that, that is looking really awesome. And just just am stoked about this uh, this awesome gearing here. 
feels really good actually. I don't have to sand or deeper or anything like that. Uh, everything looks great out of the box there. And it's interesting that, that this transmission runs two idler gears. So, very interesting. But once again, just so you know, if you are if you don't have the X-Factory component, uh, you, you could always run your stock team associated component. So, that is looking really well. Just damn, just testing this thing. Making sure that the fitment is, is correct. Uh, just so you're aware that uh, you shouldn't rush through the step. You should actually just test out everything. If, it, if anything's not really... Uh, connecting or, or uh, fitting correctly, now is the time to actually correct it. So I have my stock team associated idler gear and I am just going to go ahead and grab my my uh, team associated bearing and put it into the uh, idler gear. And the idler gear was actually a little bit harder to set in. It was such a struggle but uh, just so you know I ended up did using that, that spacer and that ended up pushing everything flush. Uh, so that the idler gear was able to go in. I'm just going to do the other side. And yeah, it's still a little bit tight. Uh, once again, I'm just going to use the uh, socket set. I'm you're probably using it the wrong way. Probably shouldn't be applying, trying to figure out a way to apply force on it one way. But uh, it, it is working. I'm able to uh, get, my, get, get my ball bearing in there. I'm uh, just going to just do a check to make sure that it is working. It's kind of crucial that every every little piece and component inside the transmission is is in tough shape and and is going to be working at at its best. And once again, just having a little trouble with this particular idler gear here. I'm just going to end up just pushing it down. Apologize for everything beyond a focus at this point but uh, uh, just too involved with trying to get the uh, idler gear inside the inside the there and it is seems to be working pretty awesome I'm just gonna just put this off to the side here and next step I'm just go ahead and uh, just putting in the idler gears and and you also you need to make sure you have an idler gear shaft that goes right through and just so you know that the the x-factory version of the idler gear shaft actually feels a little bit more solid than the uh, team associated version and uh, it's definitely seems more brushed and and uh, more polished and more care kind of went in there uh, but just so you just so you realize that the uh, team associated version of the shaft does work as well too and both are very good. I'm just testing fitment as I go along. And it looks like it's working out great. So I'm just showing you the, the uh, team associated version of the ball bearing. And we'll just go ahead and cut this open and, and uh, go ahead and put in the, the uh, ball bearings in there. Once again, it's just the uh, what kind of stunning is that the idler gear is one of those gears that that you end up uh, replacing quite a bit if, if anything the transmission goes bad and uh, in this particular kit we have two of them so it's kind of fun we get that to look forward to and here we are the uh, team associated idler gear shaft and just so you realize that uh, this one doesn't seem as polished as the as the uh, uh, X Factory version. I'm actually digging the X Factory version of the Eller shaft much better than the uh, team associated version. But once again, I'm just going to do a test here to make sure that everything is spinning okay. And it looks like, actually, it looks like everything is spinning quite awesomely. Final step in assembling the transmission, or final main step in assembling transmission, is to put in the uh, differential gear. And this is perhaps one of the better differential gears that I've built it does feel quite solid and I'm just going to go ahead and just push this through the out drive and just be patient with it uh, everything is fitting just super tight right now but it also feels like like uh, like really really good right now too so I'm going to go ahead and 
and uh, just check the uh, differential gear a little bit here and uh, just check to make sure that uh, I have the uh, right, right uh, paw bearing in there and that everything is fitting correctly and just turn the gears so I can actually push it in there we go so I'm turning the uh, top shaft and everything seems to be rotating as, as good as possible so that's good news and just doing like a little test here the reason why I'm being so picky and testing this so much is that uh, a lot is riding on how this part gets assembled so if you uh, if you assemble this step incorrectly um, you're you're gonna have further troubles down the line with your transmission so so just once again just checking it checking it everything looks great uh, next step I'm gonna do is just apply some differential lube on there and in a sense uh, that that uh, uh, by by uh, adding in some lubrication inside the transmission uh, I would have the gear spin more freely and and everything runs better uh, there's a whole other train of thought that you shouldn't lubricate any of the gears and you should just seal the the uh, transmission gears uh, without any lubrication because lubrication and grease and whether it's black grease or, or silicone uh, grief, grease uh, it, it becomes the transmission case becomes a dirt magnet or the casing uh, becomes a magnet for dirt uh, and thus slowing down the or breaking the uh, the transmission um, I'm from the school where where I think that because everything is fitting so tight uh, I'm always looking for a way to make this run better so my thoughts are like if, if you would like to go ahead and add, add grease in there uh, and I'm one of those guys in the camp where once I decided like okay I'm gonna add in some grease in there uh, I got really torn between the black grease and the uh, stealth differential loop and in a sense uh, you could actually order a, an X factory uh, grease as well too they actually sell one too but I just decided to, to go with something that I could actually get at a local store here at my uh, hobby shop so so uh, not a not a whole lot of necessary strategizing per se but uh, I kind of based my decision on uh, availability so I thought like in case hey in case I have to rebuild this this component uh, I would have a another one in stock so uh, that would be uh, pre-built so here we are threading in the checking out the transmission case uh, looks beautiful everything is is spinning up nicely uh, everything is exactly where it should be at and it overall just feels uh, awesome um, also uh, just so you know a lot of a lot of uh, parts did go into this particular one uh, but the uh, the X factory one is is uh, definitely uh, ranks as monks one of my favorites now if you're gonna try to order the the uh, the carbide differential balls from X factory as of now uh, they seem to be uh, back ordered on them so pretty much the the next step would be to uh, assemble the uh, the motor plate to this uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and just test out the the screws make sure I have the right size screws and it's uh, pretty much all set and I'm just going to go ahead and put in one screw as a placeholder and actually where I'm putting that screw is actually incorrect you should it should go like one one peg up there one hole up there and pretty much um, it's it looks like it's it's set to go um, I could just tighten it up a little bit do like a little test spin here everything is going great so get ready for step nine where we mount the transmission to the chassis 